In this video, we're going to review the exponential, the, the exponential function e to the at, and we're going to see how that exponential function is the solution to a family of differential equations that describes a number of fairly common physical systems. For example, we have here a bucket containing water, and there's a hole in the bucket at the bottom. As we've discussed before, the rate at which the water is flowing out of the bucket depends upon the amount of water in the bucket. The greater the amount of water, the more water in the bucket there is, the faster the water flows out. And as that water level decreases, the rate at which the water flows out also decreases. Mathematically, that's described with a differential equation of the form dx dt is equal to negative k times x of t. Let's look at that. The rate at which the quantity x is changing, dx dt, is proportional to the value of x itself. The greater x, the greater the rate it's changing. If we're talking about the water in the bucket, the more water in the bucket, the greater x is, the more quickly it's changing. We're going to find that in circuits involving resistors and either capacitors or inductors, the voltage current actions in those circuits are going to be described by a similar differential equation. For the voltage on a capacitor, we'll be able to say that the change in voltage on the capacitor as a function of time is equal to negative 1 over RC times the voltage on the capacitor. So in this case, that proportionality constant K is equal to 1 over RC. Similarly, regarding the current in an inductor, we're going to find that the rate at which the current is changing is proportional to, and the proportionality constant in this case is R over L times the current. So let's go through and solve this differential equation. It's easy enough to do through a separation of variables, which will show us where this exponential function comes from, and then we're going to look at the exponential function and a few variations on that theme. So to start with, let's divide both sides by x and multiply both sides by t so that we get all the x terms on the left-hand side and the t terms on the right. As you know, that's the separation of variable technique. So we'll have on the left-hand side dx over x of t. I'm going to drop the subscript to t just to make the, the, uh, the writing a little cleaner. Is equal to negative k times dt. Now, our purpose is to solve for the function x of t that satisfies this differential equation. We can do that by integrating both sides, integrating the left-hand side with respect to x. And here, we're going to integrate from x0, the initial quantity of x, on up to the value of x at some time t. So the upper limit will just be x of t. On the right-hand side, we'll integrate to the corresponding values of t, or t equaling 0, on up to t. The integral of the left-hand side, that's just 1 over x dx. That, of course, is equal to the natural log of x evaluated at the limits, is equal to negative k times t evaluated at the limits, which is upper limit t, and the lower limit is 0, so the second term just drops out, and we have that. Now again, we're solving for this function x of t. So evaluating this at the upper and lower limits, we have then the natural log of x of t minus the natural log of the initial value of x is equal to negative kt. Using the difference property of logarithms, we can combine these two, and we have then the natural log of x of t over x naught is equal to negative k times t. Having combined these two log terms into a single log term, we can now exponentiate both sides. And on the left-hand side, we get x of t over x naught is equal to e to the minus k times t. Multiplying both sides of the equation by x naught gives us what we've been looking for, and that is x as a function of t is equal to x naught e to the minus k times t. Let's take a look at that function. x of t is equal to e 
or is equal to x naught e to the minus kt. You're familiar with this. You know that at t equals 0, e to the 0 is 1, and we have simply that initial value, x naught. In this case, it's 5. Now, as t grows, effect, uh, um, conceptually, increasing without limit, as it goes to infinity, we then have e to the minus infinity. Well, e to the minus infinity is 0. So this function then dies out as t goes to infinity, and we have that classic exponential decay term. This, we will see, represents the quantity of water in a bucket, the charge or the voltage on a capacitor, or the current in an inductor, as the energy in the capacitor or the energy in the, in the inductor is allowed to just dissipate or discharge through a resistance. We're going to also find situations where we're going to be charging the capacitor or the inductor. It's going to be starting at some initial voltage for the capacitor or an initial current of the inductor of zero, and then going through a switching process over time, the value of the voltage or the current is going to finalize at some value that is established by the circuit around it. And the function of time that describes that transition from its initial value to its final value is, well, starting at zero and going to its final value, is x of t is equal to x of f minus x of f e to the minus kt. Now, x of f, that's a constant. In this case, it's just 5. It's a constant value. Constant is a function of time. This term here, as we already know, is this thing that dies out as a function of time. And it looks something like that. So we take this constant, this function here is taking a constant and subtracting this exponentially decaying term. Initially, both of them equal x, both of them equal x sub f, and so initially the difference of those two is zero. As the exponential function dies out, we're subtracting less and less, and ultimately we get to where we're subtracting zero, and this function does in fact describe that movement. Now another form of that is that we can factor out the x sub f from both of those terms and we're left with x sub f times 1 minus e to the minus kt. The final situation that we're interested in is where the voltage or current on the capacitor or the inductor starts at some non-zero value that we're going to call x naught, or in this case we're going to call it x sub i for the initial value and it's going to go to some final value, x sub f. And this function here describes that movement. Notice that initially, at t equals 0, we have x final a constant plus x initial minus x final e to the 0. Well, e to the 0 is 1, so we have x final plus x initial minus x final, the x finals cancel, and at t equals zero, this function is simply the initial value. Now once again, as time progresses, this exponential term goes to zero, which means then that this term here goes to zero, and all we're left with is x sub f. So the value of the we're talking about either the voltage or current is going to go from, from some initial value to some final value. The distance that it changes or the amount that it changes is equal to x sub i minus x sub f. And this equation right here describes then the movement that we see depicted in that graph.